Welcome back to Ripple Training's YouTube channel. Travis here. Earlier this week, Blackmagic Design announced DaVinci Resolve 17 and is jam-packed with new features. Steve and Mark have already done a wonderful job covering many of those features, and if you haven't already, I suggest you go check out their videos. But today, I wanted to talk about a new effect added in Resolve 17 called Transform. So let's take a look. So for this demo, I'm going to be working with these two clips here. And what I have is a young man showing a video to his friend on his iPad mini. Now you'll say, well, there's no video on that iPad. Well, that's what we're going to use this effect for. We're going to take this top clip and place it into the iPad mini screen using the transform effect. And it's just a clip of the young man on a homemade go-kart going downhill. Now, many of you may say, well, why don't you just jump into the Fusion or the color page and use the amazing tracking features that DaVinci Resolve has? And I would completely agree with you. Yes, that is what you should do, but not everybody knows how to use the tracking features or wants to, or maybe you just, you're doing something real quick or you want to show an effects artist an example of what you want to do. Well, we can do that with the transform effect. So I'm going to go to the effects library and in the open effects, filters in the resolve effects transform section you'll see I already have it selected the transform effect I'll drag and drop that on the top clip and hide the effects library now nothing has changed yet but if we navigate to the effects tab of the inspector we can see our transform effect right now control mode is set to sliders and this gives us some some basic transform options like our position zoom rotate and then you even have stuff for pitch and yaw I'll go ahead and reset that. Another control mode we have is interactive pins. Now to show this, I need to turn on my FX overlays by clicking this button here. And you can add up to four pins anywhere you like on the image. And then once you have those added, you can click and drag to distort the image however you please. And I'm gonna reset this one more time. And what I want is under control mode is interactive canvas. And this gives me a overlay that gives me the ability to corner pin my image. So I'll grab this top right corner, pull it over to the corner of that part. And then again here. And boom, not bad. I'll turn off the effects and it's rough, I know, but the other thing I wanted to point out, and you may have already noticed as well, my boss Steve pointed out to me the first time I showed him this example. He's like, well, that doesn't look right. Your top clip is 1920 by 1080. The iPad mini, its aspect ratio is four by three, and he's completely correct. So we need to make this top image four by three aspect ratio. Now the transform effect does have some crop options. So we could just crop this to a four by three. But notice if I drag all the way to the right on my crop left, it's just a one. That's it's not very informative feedback to help me with what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna set that back. I'm also gonna I'm gonna reset my transform for now, and I'm gonna navigate back to the video tab of the inspector and go to its cropping section. And the reason why is if I drag this to the right, my crop left parameter it's telling me 1920. So this is giving me a pixel accurate readout, which is really helpful because I know the closest resolution to 1920 by 1080, that is four by three aspect ratio, is 1440 by 1080. Now the difference between 1920 and 1440 is 480. So I'm gonna split 480 in half between my left and right crop, and I'll enter 240 for my left crop, 240 for my right crop, and now I have a nice four by three image. Perfect. So let's navigate back to the effects, and I reset my transform effect. So I gotta choose interactive canvas again, turn on my overlays once again, and now let's recorner pin this. Now you'll notice that the corner of my image is no longer lines up with the corner of the canvas, but we can still get it close. So I'll pull these corners down. Next, I'll zoom in my canvas, and it, I can do that with my scroll wheel, and then middle mouse click and drag to reposition, and then I can get a little bit more accurate here. 
Great, let's turn off those FX overlays. And that's not looking too bad. If I scroll back, it looks like he's showing his video to his friend. Now, if I play this back, you'll notice that he does move slightly. So we would need to, well, track it. But again, this, is, this video isn't about tracking. So the other option I have is in the control option section of the transform effect, we can set a keyframe for our canvas. So you could turn back on your FX overlays and then slowly step through and reposition your canvas as needed. Now this can be a lengthy process. So using the art of movie magic, like a baking show, I've already done this. So I'll turn off my FX overlays and reposition my viewer and play this back for you. And it's not perfect, but I can totally sell that as him showing his video to his friend. Now, after doing this, this is obviously not the ideal. It was quite a bit of work to keyframe that in. Where this really shines is on a video where if it's a nice steady slider move, the keyframing is nice and easy. But once I started this, I took it as a personal challenge to get it done. Another day, I would totally track this to the iPad. But now you have a new transform effect at your disposal. Before I end this video, there's one last thing I would like to show you. In DaVinci Resolve 17, Blackmagic introduced a feature called Smart Reframe. If you're interested in the details of this tool, please check out Steve Martin's new features video on Resolve 17. Also, we've been getting questions about people not seeing Smart Reframe in their copies of DaVinci Resolve. And in order to have Smart Reframe, you need to have DaVinci Resolve Studio because it relies on the neural engine that is in the Studio version. To locate the Smart Reframe, you're going to navigate to the Video tab of the Inspector. And then here, just below Transform, you can see Smart Reframe. A quick explanation of the tool is if you were to change the aspect ratio and or resolution of your project, Smart Reframe would reframe your clips within that new aspect ratio or resolution as best as it can. But what I want to show you is how to use this tool in the context of a cropped clip. So this top clip, we know that we've cropped. And at the bottom of the cropping options, we have retain image position. With that check mark checked, if I click reframe, it will reframe our cropped clip within the cropping. And after clicking reframe, you can see that image is slightly moved to the left. Yet another great feature added in DaVinci Resolve 17. So let me know what you guys think of this new effect in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more about DaVinci Resolve, look out for new Resolve 17 tutorials from Ripple Training in the near future. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.